Hello and welcome to Midlife Isn't a Crisis with me, Christy Adams. I'm going to be bringing you motivation, information and we're going to have conversations about challenging age stereotypes and positivity and optimism. So whether you're looking forward to a gap year or a new career or chilling or getting over your empty nest, whatever you choose to be doing, this place is for you if you're an optimistic, positive thinker. So enjoy the show and I'll catch you again at the end. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Christy here on Tuesday, 21st of September 2021, ready to record episode 58. And it's been one of those sort of the joys of working from home this week where I'd sat down yesterday to get the podcast recorded and one of my neighbours decided to do their garden with really loud electric equipment. So that got put on hold and now it's parcel delivery time and some some books have just arrived. So that's always exciting. And I've started recording all over again. So this week's episode has been a bit of a trauma to get there, but we're here today. And it's called My Latest Book Is Out Now and How I Can Help You Write Your Book Too. So it's a bit of a convoluted title, but hopefully it'll make sense. So my quick intro. I've been accepted as a writer in residence almost on a production in Europe. It's a publication, magazine, online and I'm really excited about it. I don't know where it's going to lead yet, but it's validation for my writing and the fact that this new pen name is working and that people will get to see it out in the public domain. So it's nice to have editors actually approving your work. And whilst we all should do things for the love of it, it's always nice to have that external validation as well. My book's out, as I said in the title, so I'll come on to that in a minute. And you'll be able to hear it. It's here because it's just arrived. And I've also got a pen name book out as well, which has also just arrived. So it's one of those days to check all my books have arrived. And I'm still in the 5am, 6am Writers Club. But now it's in the dark. In the UK, it's very dark at that time. I actually like it. I like to be able to sit in the dark with my little lamp on. Always reminds me of those sort of detective films that you see where they work the night shift and they always have that little light on on the desk. And I'd like to know, are you more productive in the daytime, in the winter, in the summer, outside? You know, where do you find your productivity is highest? And do you even know? I actually started keeping a log about maybe six months to eight months ago now of how many words I write, but importantly, where I write them and how long it takes me so that I can see I'm a more productive writing sat on the bed with the iPad or I'm a better at a computer at five in the morning. So if you don't know when you're most productive, it might be worth you looking at that and actually keeping a log of not only your word count, but how many words you write and where you write them and how you produce them. Was it dictation? Was it handwritten? You get the idea. And my favourite app this week has been TweetDeck. It's owned by Twitter and I absolutely love it. I don't think there's an app on my phone, which is really, really annoying. I've not managed to find one anyway. Um, But on the computer, you can schedule posts in on Twitter for however long. And it is fantastic when you sign up for any promotions or, you know, you promise to share things for people. It's just so, so easy and you can just schedule them out. So if you've not looked at it, TweetDeck is definitely something that you want to have a look at, especially if you've got to do marketing of any sort where you have to get regular posts out. And it's free, which is always a good bonus. So back to the topic. My latest book is out now. It's called Damaged. I have it in my hand as we speak. You can hear it here. And it's called Damaged, a Jezebel Jones thriller. And I'm going to read the blurb because it's my podcast and my book, so I'm allowed. Jezebel, Bell Jones, insurance investigator, returns in this dark story of abuse, murder and hidden secrets. An inferno rages in Morton House Children's Home. Once the firefighters get the fire under control, they discover bones in the cellar. They soon realise the bones don't belong to one fire victim. These are the bones of children buried there over the years. 
Bell again works with Mac, a retired firefighter who now owns his own private investigator business. They put their own lives at risk to find out exactly what happened at Morton House. With friends old and new, they must avoid getting distracted by their own demons to make sure they solve the mystery. Can they discover the truth before more... Ooh, I've got a spelling mistake in my blurb. Before the authorities put more children in danger. Is glamorous, ambitious Dr Amanda Hughes Wright involved? How is Bell's old nemesis, the property developer Cridland, involved, if at all? Can Bell find out what really happens at Morton House Children's Home and stop more children from going missing? The second book in the Jezebel Jones series set in Yorkshire, England. You can meet Bell in her first mystery, Ashes. So I'll need to put that spelling mistake right. It just shows, doesn't it, no matter how many edits you do and no matter how many beta readers and people look at it, there's always one little word that sneaks through. So don't be, don't worry about that because it always happens, even in the best published books, the best sellers. They'll always have at least one error in it. It's quite a game to try and find it. So but anyway, that's out now. And I want to just sort of go through my process a little bit with you. Just This is the bit where I can help you write your book. The... I'll start right at the beginning with a spreadsheet and a very, even before that, a very big piece of paper. I read loads of books in the genre to get me in the mood of whatever I'm writing. So if it's a children's book, I'll sit and read loads of my grandkids, which I love doing anyway. If it's a thriller, I will read loads of the bestsellers and loads in the really specific genre and get myself fully immersed in that mood. And then I will plot out all the characters on and the plot on a massive big piece of paper i'll put down all the things that i've got a really big roll of paper i got from ikea but before i did that i used to use lining paper from a wallpaper shop so it's not an expensive thing to do they're only a couple of pounds for the paper and you can roll it out put it out on the table or the floor and sort of drop thoughts on it it's a bit like a huge mind map and you can draw lines, whatever you choose to do. You can do it over and over again, repeat the process until you hone it down. Then I, try, I take photographs of that so I don't lose it. Some people I've seen actually put that up on the wall as well, which I don't do in the office. I find it a little bit too much, but maybe that'll change. And I have a spreadsheet, so I transfer everything onto a spreadsheet. And my spreadsheet has different tabs for each of the books in the series, the overall plot, and I keep it all recorded on there. And you do have to constantly go in and update it because as you edit, you find more and more. But it definitely helps you keep track of it all. So I, I write to the hero's journey formula. I've actually got a book on my bookcase called The Seven Stories, um, Seven Basic Plots. It works on the theory that every book that's ever been written fits within those seven plots. And The Hero's Journey, if you haven't heard of it, definitely investigate it and look into it. I am revising my Hero's Journey planner at the moment, but it's something that helps you write your book because it talks you through things. The plot of Star Wars fits to it, Lord of the Rings, all sorts of books fit to it and films. So I use that formula and it splits down into 10, 11, 12, depending which version you look at of sections of the book or the story and that also helps on the spreadsheet and with organizing so i get all that written out it's not written in tablets of stone but i'm definitely a plotter and i think you need to be when you write series which is what i'm doing i then add in side threads as i go and again i write all those down on the spreadsheet and each character that's in the book has to have an a to b journey and so does the story and with the hero's journey, the protagonist and the antagonist start in one place and cannot possibly imagine where they'll end up at the end of the book. And that's the A to B journey. So it's quite exciting plotting that out. And sometimes you'll have the beginning and the end and then you get the sticky middle. And that's the bit that's the hard bit. And I also put all my characters in a character Bible in Scrivener. A writing scrivener, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's a really good writing app, you can find it on my website and it's written, for, it's made for writers, you can drag and drop chapters and move them around which is absolutely amazing, it's so much better than Microsoft Word and I don't actually know how I'd ever go back to writing in Word now, um, but I really like Scrivener, like I say it's on the website and also on the website is a character bible template 
And the reason you call it a character Bible is basically, especially if you're writing a series again, you want to keep track of your characters, who they are. You want to know their backstory, who their parents were, what the heritage is, what the hairstyles are like. Lots of trivial information that may never go in the book, but it helps you know your character. You can also share information with fans in places like Patreon or on your mailing list and give them sort of backstory, if you like, to your characters that are secret extras to the story. But also it helps you keep track through the book because I discovered when I read my first book before I wrote my second book, my protagonist had changed hairstyle completely and a car and not even mentioned it. So it's important to try and keep track because if you don't, your fans certainly will. And the more and more books, I want to get this series out to a lot of books. I want to really sort of build the series up. And it's important that I keep track of where the characters are going in each A to B journey. And I include all that in my character Bible in Scrivener. And obviously you can do the same. And hopefully that has just helped you know that it's a really basic process at the start. That you can write your book. You can get it out there. And... Don't be intimidated. You know, if you've got an idea, just grab a huge piece of paper and start mind mapping it out and start getting some ideas written down. And I tend to drop bullet points in, put them on my spreadsheet, but then into Scrivener, I drop these bullet points in throughout the sort of plan of the book, like the 12 sections of the hero's journey. And I drop in the bullet points and then just go into each one and elaborate a little bit and build it up from there. And if you've got a really clear scene in your head, even if it's in the middle of the book, it doesn't matter. You can write it, especially in Scrivener. You can just write it and then you want to move it later. You can, but you just can drop things in. You don't have to write from the beginning to the end. You can write in a different order if that suits you. And I know a lot of people who write the end first. They actually write the first chapter last because they need to get the hook right. So, you know, you'll find your own way of doing it. But hopefully the tools on my website will help you. And if there's anything that you need, let me know. Because, I ha like I say, I'm altering my hero's journey template at the moment. But there is a free character Bible in there. And the software that you need as well to write is in there. OK, so I hope that's helped just a little bit. And the book recommendation this week is How to Write a Series by Sarah Rosette. As I've said, I'm writing a series, so it made sense for me to share this book with you. And of course, buy my book called Damaged, a Jezebel Jones thriller by Christy Adams. So get it bought. And call to action. I always want you to take action at the end of every episode. Why not take up my course? It's a 28 day course less than a coffee a month a uh, coffee a day rather so it's about 100 pounds 100 dollars which is nothing for over a month is it if you you probably spend more than that on coffees even though you don't admit it and what it does it talks you through a process for building up the writing habit from going from literally not writing anything to becoming a writer having a daily habit finding the time using the right tools so I will drop the link in the show notes to that or you can drop me a DM and I'll send you the link. All right. So I hope that's helped just a little bit and given you the confidence to actually pick up a pen and start writing. So I'll catch you again next time. Bye. Hello again. Christy Adams here, writer and coach. And I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in this show, especially you, because this is why I'm bringing it to you, to bring you value and to encourage you and motivate you because I know what it's like if there's so much pressure on, we're constantly being pushed over that hill and told that we're too old, and we're definitely not. If you'd like the links or the show notes, they're over on my website, which is christyadamswriter.com. So if you jump over there, you'll find some other free resources, my books, details of my coaching, because you can have one-to-one -one chats with me or join a coaching program with me. One thing that I would really like is if you could share this podcast with someone, that would be amazing. Someone that you feel will get value from it and will join the community. So if you share it with them and don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss any of the episodes. And if you're feeling really generous, a review on whichever 
system you've downloaded it from, whether it's iTunes or Spotify, a review would be fantastic because that brings me even more listeners. So thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, midlife isn't a crisis. It's our time to shine. So go out there, do something amazing this week and I'll catch you next time. Bye.